still, like, if he's if he's got a life stealer on top of him, he's not going to last that long. You can black hole and that will cut through the rage. So if they have a rage TP counter, I guess he's going to try his best. He's going to try his best. Pycat being on this top lane is probably the best way to uh, pressure the Drow Ranger. Again, with that Dazzle, if you do just charge at her, if you're able to get close enough with that Shadow Wave and uh, probably due to Zai's interference with his Orb of Venom, then you actually have yourself an opportunity. Speaking of, SVG, taking that combo, it's not really like the nastiest combo in the game, but it actually is going to enable Shadow or Shadow Wave rather to do a lot of damage and onto the hero like disrupting a contribution here. But uh, should they go down, should a Burrow Strike land, he can definitely put some serious damage onto these heroes. Again, these are not really the tankiest heroes in the game. Hi, cat. What are you doing, dude? Uh, did he just... I actually didn't see what he picked up. I gotta assume he just picked up something, but he just ran to the secret shop, took like a million right clicks and backed off. He's durable enough with the heal on the Dazzle to survive that. I really don't want to be doing that without some sort of a uh, plan in mind. That plan looks like will be coming in from Zai, although they do have a Sentry Ward. Zai is not invisible right now. Sentry? The Sentry looks like the Radiant side will clear these Sentries out. So they're gonna get on top of SVG. And he is just going to fold. That Shadow Wave doing 160 physical. And you are can't do anything about that. In fact, he's now in a little bit of trouble as well. That Orb of Venom working overtime. All right, well, they want something a little bit bigger. This Visage is at, well, really low HP. So he's Siphon now. And you can see, like, the game plan as soon as you get Siphon is just Grave Chill and then run. But wait, CCNC is able to do this. Pop that Exorcism, go to town. Pycat is able to do this. He's... This is a very weird skill build from a level 5 life stealer, but he's getting free farm on this top lane. They'll finally go for 33 with the Curse Crown, pop him with the Shadow Realm and here. And that's kind of the downside of going for this build as life stealer. Such a powerful build once it's complete. Before that, though, when you're at this point, you're just a power tread hero. And that's really bad. And now he's going to get jumped on by a black hole. Usually you rage TP here, but the black hole chain it with a stomp and a crown. I don't think that crown even popped at the end. He's just dead. They kill off Pycat. SVG, and he get jumped by Zai, immediate glimpse back, puts up a field. DCNC gets inside, lands a swarm from downtown, gets the kill. In my heart of hearts, that makes me very, very excited. PD, he will clean out that poor centaur, but the familiar starting to fly overhead, gets the glimpse. Dazzle, he's crowned up, he's dead, man. I just like three shots in total. Fight. But we got plus 26 from this precision aura, and this is like a double damage on these familiars. That's pretty disgusting. From the back, it's Zai. He tripped the sentry ward. And he's going to get blown up. And CC and C's going to jump in. Here comes a really nice play from 33. The episode of Burst Strike onto everyone. But it's not going to quite land any killing blows. CC and Z very low, though. With the grave, will stay alive for a while longer. Tomato will race him and kill him off. At the cost of his own life, 33. Salvage Get rid of that glimpse effect. GG is another one, though. Doesn't quite yet have enough vision. He's gonna get jacked up. Burrow Strike now aggressively used. Terrorize coming in. SVG is gonna get quite a bit of help with the mechanism as well. They're gonna glimpse back Zai, and this time there is no epicenter interference. Sand King Storm naturally have long cooldowns, means that they can't afford to botch a single fight. They will start the fight though by jumping onto Zai with the Bedlam. He's gonna get torn apart by Jex. And off in the front lines, Tomato's gonna be driving away PPD. Rates? I'm not sure how well that works out. The Infest, the Radiance, the Burrow Strike. Oh, and they found someone. They glimpse back CCNC. Still with no Yule Scepter. He's gonna get some help as the Sand King Epicenter does come in with the Life Stealer. Onto the Visage. He does have that double life though. Sneaking now with the Black Hole on the Static Storm onto the Life Stealer. No real damage going into him because he doesn't have that rage, but he's gonna get terrorized shortly afterwards. And now the Focus Fire from the Gyro Ranger. Pycat's gonna go down. Off in the back line. 33 with the Sandstorm. Will kill off one, but. They are also killing off that Visage. CCNC gets in there with the Ghosts. Great plays from 33 consistently in this game. Shuriken bouncing through. Will not get the kill. Dry Ranger will be fine as SPG puts up a field. Walls off Zai. Walls off CCNC. One more Shadow Realm. CCNC gotta be careful about that. Enigma will ensure a full duration channel. There is a uh, Ghost to kill off Enigma. There's a chance that that happens. Not, very, not a very high chance. The motto. Hit with that Epicenter over in mid out. They do have the Bramble Maze down. They don't have any eyes on CCNC, though. No obs in the area. Now they do. Short glimpse back into a Static Storm. He still has that Yule Scepter. He will use it to dodge that entire Bedlam. Pycat getting right on top of Sneaking right now. No Black Hole options for this Enigma, and now it's with the Silence. Terrorize is going to come in, but it's too late. The Enigma's already down. And now Storm has just got to back off. Full Retreat Mode is SVG. 
Earn taking him down as they land another burrow strike onto two. 33 once again delivers. Zai Shuriken Bounce will kill off SVG and it's the war now trying to book it with a TP. Will escape just barely. Familiar Zai is going to walk under an Observer Sentry. Are going to dust him up. Yule Scepter. They got him with the crown. And they got him with the Yule Scepter. He's stuck in a Bramble Maze and here comes the Bedlam. That's a dead bounty hunter. Dark Willow 7 0 and 3 in this game. How is that happening right now? I mean, that's great for MSS, but this this hero is bound to die. Like, it's not really possible to stay alive this entire game as Dark Willow. He's back on a 33. Looks like he's stuck in the stack storm. No, four stats out. Again, makes his escape. Bramble May is still going to come up here and take a big hit from the Shadow Realm. Still has that Yule Scepter. He has precious cargo inside. Looks like they don't want to chase too, too far here. Silence does land onto a bunch. They're going to turn around onto the Disruptor and take him down in an instant. The King still has that black hole with the BKB. Is going to drop it only onto that one here on the Light Slither, though. The Crimson Guard goes up. He's still at half HP. Bedlam is destroying people in the background, though. Pycat will go down in Soul Assumption. Where was his rage? as long cooldown. Now the Curse Crown, Yule Scepter combo onto Zai once again. Off in the back line, the Death Prophet with the Siphons worked away. Look at the healing. Down from 400 all the way back to 1,000, but still the sustained damage is enough. With that damage from the Drought Ranger, Zai now, the last hero alive, will go down. And Storm, as, there we go, yeah, how much is it? It's plus 55 for her. Got all these heroes with it as well. It's not active right now, so the uh, creeps don't get it. Still, that is going to show up. Get a good read on what's going on here. Cooldowns for Storm. They have the Dark Willow ults, and they will jump in onto the Disruptor. Static Storm is needed. He can't get it off. In the background, 33 will use himself, keep him safe as they're onto the model right now. Four staff into the high ground. They still see him thanks to the track, but long way to actually get him. Zai is tracking up everyone. They want MSS with the Blink Dagger, Dark Will, and Y build. This is not a Roach killing build. Now the ghosts are out though. Storm still no black hole. They do get the terrorized though, driving them out of the Roach pit, separating them from Zai. And that means this bounty hunter might be going down, although with the grave, they'll keep him alive for a little while longer. The rest of the team, though, they're focusing onto this Roche. 33 is going to jump right in, but sneaking, he's got the BKB up. He's going to walk right into the Roche pit, just stop them from doing anything. They've taken down the Sand King already, and now CCNC, who has no grave, and he's just going to get obliterated off in the back line. It's Pycat trying to go after you are. Four staff's already used, and this Drought Ranger's in a lot of trouble, but the sneaking Enigma has another black hole if they need it. And it looks like they might not even need it. Pycat is stuck in the field, and he has nowhere to go. He's going to go down, giving a double kill to Tomato. Zai is able to slip out. PPD, the Dazzle, somehow, again, is, is able to live. He's only died once. That's very impressive. Oh, oh never mind. They, they found Zai. They found... But the Black Hole was not using that engagement. Optic were just scrambling for answers, but once they lose their Sand King, they lose their initiation, which means that Storm can literally just calmly walk in and do whatever the hell they want in that fight. We saw exactly that. Pycat, even though he's on top of the Drow Ranger, doesn't do quite enough damage, and that's going to be a quick two racks for Storm. And even the Tier 2 Tower on top lane. Looks like that might be going down as well. So, yeah, you know that ability to take these fights, but it's so much more difficult. Now that Storm only have one more objective in the game. Third Familiar online as the Agnum Scepter is up. 33 is going to jump right in. What's the BKB of sneaking, but now he's kind of overcommitted. Dual Scepter will keep him safe for a little bit. He has a force that down to the low ground. He will dodge the Bedlam with that and get up to safety, it looks like. The Glimpse back is onto him, though, and 33 will go down, and also the Black Hole in the Pycat will be interrupted by the Shuriken Bounce, it looks like. Pycat still free to go wherever he wants, but he's going on to Tomato, the Aegis Carrier. Not what he wants. Now he with the Terrorize. Brave is going to keep him alive, but the crown is still on him. He's stunned for what seems like an eternity and will go down. DCNC is making a full retreat. Familiars, though, pushing the front lines. They get the vision for the glimpse. The GG's already called CCNC. Final casualty, perhaps, but Storm coming back from just a little bit of deficit there. All it takes is a couple of good team fights. That's all it takes. And. Being able to push down towers with a Chen, with that Battle Trance, super valuable. And of course, if you do decide to go for that uh, Battle Fury, you can really slowly and Pycat going into a lane versus that Tidehunter. He's going to be uh, able to function pretty well in this lane. Just because he is you know, usually going to be in melee form, but not in lane. He doesn't have to be melee. SVG, as long as he's just stalking the Chen, keeps eyes on where he's moving, will be just fine. And we got Tomato hunting down a Courier. One more shot. Oh, the shards! Gonna push Tomato into the Courier. No! Oh, Zai with a very, very... Quite a bit there, but that's kind of inevitable. 
Oh, and the sentry is still there for SVG. He was able to kill it off before PPD was able to find the sentry that he placed. Pycat, he's gonna have to watch his distances. The uh, whirling axes will help quite a bit to Mato. Got one siphon on CC and C. Fairly bulky here, has the fairy fire, but I think the poison damage should just kill him off, and it will. Zai will redeem himself. Tomato on a little bit of an island. We got Zai once again set up to move in. Although Tomato's at perfectly healthy amounts of HP. Does have a siphon at the ready as well. He is gonna push out the wave though, so this is the opportunity that they were looking for, but at the same time, there is a bounty hunter right around the corner. Snowball from behind. Tomato's path is gonna be walled off by shards if he tries to run. Got another siphon, but here comes the support from MSS. Trying to go for CC and C instead of Zai. Now they're gonna change their mind, go for that tusk, but Tomato with one more swarm just short. And with the snowball in, I'm not really sure about that, Zai. He's just gonna die. Hmm. Two. There's a full rotation now. The War CS has been uh, he's been pretty solid. Looking for some safe farm in this bottom lane. But unfortunately for him, the safe farm is non-existent here because here comes the snowball. Shards will wall him in like that, and he's just gonna go down. MSS is here, blocking off Zai a little bit, but way too many enemies to fight up against. He has that, then Optic. We will have to second guess whenever they make a plays, uh, whenever they make plays that are that aggressive. Sentry is there. The shards will keep SVG in sentry range, and they'll get another one. A lot of damage into this tower, along with Pycat. Level one fervor, but uh, still, uh, level level one fervor is really all you need. They're gonna rotate your out of that lane and join up with this tide under. Tosses is away though. And now MSS, the treants are a little bit in a lagging position. Still in front of 33, I think they have him in a corner. Enough to get this kill. One more right click, they got him. This is a four hero rotation up towards top lane. It's gonna, it's gonna protect him a little bit. UCNC, man, is actually just crushing Tomato in this lane. It was, of course, a little bit of help from Zai. Siphon now up as the ghosts are out. MSS from the low ground is gonna capture a Viper, letting SVG close in, and they'll take down the Viper. A lot of damage into it. They're sticking around, actually. There is a bounty hunter. Kind of circling for position, but the rest of Storm, they're not really quite ready to go into this yet. Got a Tide Hunter and a Luna farming side by side on top lane. Instead of looking for a crash in onto bottom. The G trip the Sentry Ward, and now the Tide Hunter's coming in. Send back on a Pie Cat is going to mean that they're not going to bother with him. He gets a lot of damage of the SVG before he gets sent back, though. The PPD, it looks like, is a Sprout. There is going to be a chop through, but the Treants are in the front. And now the Chen, he's in Nature's Prophet's domain, and he's gonna get smashed. By three and the Bounty Hunter, SVG has been very active and very annoying, but always going to get randomly scanned and dusted. The reeds from Optic will get them a Bounty Hunter kill. Storm side, they're gonna set up over in mid lane. MSS gonna teleport in. DC and C hit with the Gush, that's gonna get rid of that range drop charge. Ravage now out. Focus down this Viper. He's gonna get a poison attack out to sneaking. That Viper strikes and do a lot of damage. They've caught 33. Crawling Blade was already used. I don't know why, but it was on cooldown. I'm not really sure if it really would have helped him anyway there. We'll just go to work on this tower. Again, PPD, like this Chen can push, and he is doing so, but he does not clean creep waves nearly as fast as the storm side. So his push will be a little bit more slow, a little bit more methodical. Uh, they will randomly find another bounty hunter though, and <laughs> they'll take that one to the bank. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's courier has been killed. And that singular Yasha of the Troll Dyer's Warlord. Dyer obs up in the attack. sky and SVG pushing forward. Is gonna trip a sentry ward right now. Finds PPD. They put a little bit of damage into him, but still there. Actually, is a Ravage at this point. They've separated away from their Luna, and your war is gonna go down. And SVG trapped by the shards, he will also fall, as will the Tide Hunter. Storm just. You show off that blink dagger on the tiny. Looking at the Tide now. 1300 HP worth of Leviathan, though, is a lot to grind through. They will toss him up instead of back. They do break him, land the Viper Strike. It looks like that's gonna be enough. Actually, with Zai coming in with a little bit of a VJ Storm, do have all their cooldowns right now. EPD with these catapults, really dangerous for the towers, not as much so in these fights. Catapults don't have any abilities or anything like that, so it could be better. Zai is going to get walled off, though he is going to snowball out. Send back was not used, so uh, yeah, Zai is going to get beamed and yeah, should be going down here. 
Shards trying to get him some escape. Cash in on that. Hot lane, mid lane though, they are pushing. The rat game is going to be really strong with this one. Sneaking. Viper Strike is there. He's going to Ravage onto two. Just on the edge. Shirking going to bounce through. Both of them are now silenced. As the Viper, he's going to take a hit with the beam, sprout it up, and dropped. A little bit extra cash there from that track. Not exactly the perk wave there at this stage. Exorcism with the threat of Eclipse, though. This is really bold from Optic. Buying back with the Viper, it's too late. Now the buyback is wasted from Optic. Uh, they charge forward, like, best case scenario, they get SVG. And they actually caught him with the shards, so yeah, it looks like they will get SVG. Not bad at all, but it's not worth the buyback. They're gonna smoke up still with the rest of the heroes. Look to catch a couple on the retreat. TNC 33, they have Tomato as a potential target. Dual Scepter's on the Death Prophet though, sneaking, it lagging behind a little bit, now broken, so Kraken Shell is disabled. And he will be taken down, so that buyback, they are finding SVG pretty frequently. Dust is out, this time does land, SVG. He's dusted, but I don't think he was in vision. He's gonna reveal himself though, the snowball is coming in. And that will kill off this Bounty Hunter. Definitely, it looked like he was not in regular vision. They will find PPD elsewhere though, Orchid, Wrath of Nature, bam, sneaking, steals the kill. How do you play this game without catapults? It makes no sense. I'll tell you how. You replace them with trebuchets. Because trebuchets are vastly superior, as everyone knows. Good madness out from the Luna. She does still have that double life, but not for long. PPD, come vision up on the high ground as you are. It'll take quite a bit of damage. Down to half HP. Oh, the catapult is secure. Once again, 32 is going to jump right in. With the avalanche at the 3, although the disc is up on the, on the Death Prophet, she'll survive through all of it. As now they're just waiting for a good angle onto that Ravage, but they can't find it because Piecat by himself with the BKB is pushing everyone back. They have separated Tomato from the rest of his allies, though he's going to survive for long enough so that the backup can come in. Eclipse will do a whole lot of nothing, but Sneaky still has that Ravage. If they even need it, they don't. Although they might need to because 33 is going to land a really nice avalanche toss, but it doesn't kill off anyone. It destroys their health pools. It does end up killing off that Death Prophet. Now they're going to push for Sneaking. Does still have that Ravage as an option. As Zai is now going to get caught. He's going to try to put some damage to the Luna, but she still has that double life. And now he's tracking as well. Ravages out. Will connect only onto the one. Sneaking kind of punished for his patience there. They will take down this Luna eventually. No, the Aegis is going to reclaim. She's going to get almost a full restore. She will get fully restored. Buyback drought now as the UR Luna is in a little bit of trouble. Does get the Hurricane Pike over the shard and is going to throw some beams. And look at this. The wall of shards and trees. You can't go through it. Luna will go down because the Tiny's the only one who can go through it. Now he's up against one too many heroes. The Cleave doing quite a bit of damage onto SVG. MSS from the background doing some damage. Pycat's going to rush forward. He does have 600 HP still. Is sneaking going to jump in. Uses the anchor. Kills off the Tiny with the Gush on a Pie Cat. Another BKB is available. He'll try to go for Sneaky and he'll find it. Now racing for MSS. But MSS survives and gets an Ultra Kill. Ah, oh, we have an Ags on CCNC. Makes Viper Strike very low cooldown. Gives him a decent amount of bulk as well. But he's caught. Where's your Ags now? The Shuffle Forward. The Ravage is going to catch two in the background. CCNC is already down. Tracks now go out. Sneaking's Ravage. Isn't going to do all that much offense. Of course, the Viper, having gone for this build, is a very slow, methodical build on that Viper. So we'll jump forward. Here comes the power of the moon. Chen Creep's going to absorb a little bit of it, but Viper getting torn to shreds. The power of the moon is full effect. They will snowball CCNC, but he's still going to go down. Zai's taking a lot of damage as well. Podcat off the BKB, trying to go after Sneaking. We'll take the kill there. Everyone else trying to disengage away from him. From the back, though, it is going to be MSS. He's got eyes on everyone. He's looking for Zai first. With the Orchid, they'll take him down. That's Sprout and a two-man Sprout. Okay. Won't really do all that much because no one else is here for Storm. There. That's Tidehunter down a Tide who had no Ravage. A little bit of Ghost Duration for Tomato, who was... Definitely uh, playing up against that Tiny the entire time, but now they've caught PPD with a Siphon. These Glaives, even with a couple misses, just destroying him. There is no more BKB on the Troll Warlord. He's going to try to chop his way through, but the surround from the Treants, MSS delivering again. From the back, it's 33, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. He's going to get beamed out of his TP, and he's going to go down as well. The TP is out looking for the fifth. That poor Chen, all he wants to do is get a creep. And they can't even give him that. He's tracked up. He's dead. Double kill for the Nature's Prophet. Screw Roche, man. You don't want a Roche anymore. You just want to win the game. CCNC is going to... Did he Viper Strike a creep? I think that was another Toxin, actually. But he's going to get lifted up. And he's completely swarmed with heroes. He's dead again. For like the third time in as many minutes. And now the push is going to happen in earnest. As Yawar is still perfectly healthy. The Glaives 
now unleashed to bounce through absolutely everywhere. Look at it go. Witch Doctor, eat your heart out. Zai's alive, but he has no chance of going in right now. Push is happening on two fronts, MSS. He's such a powerhouse hero. Push is happening on three fronts, actually. They're going to look to take the Megas off of this. And you know what? With the Ravages backup, I think they might just have it in the bag. Zai chasing after MSS right now. And he's doing his best. MSS with the Sprout puts himself into a corner. A corner where Zai can't do anything. Has the Walrus Punch, but he just can't reach. MSS gets the kill. Oh, the GG is called after that one. Feels bad, man, if you're a husk. And the GJ Storm, wow. That team fight management. Team fight management is 